Greetings from Geneva, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of the Global Perspectives show in partnership with Dukascopy TV. I'm Flavio Roman, and today we're going to speak about patents and innovation with our invitee, Dr. Johan Stan from the European Patent Office. Johan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for this invitation, and it's a pleasure to be here in Geneva. Right. So uh, you are a member of the European Patents Office where you hold the position of patent examiner. Tell us a few things about patents in general and also about what is the mission of this European Patent Office. So thank you for this question and let's start with some history. So everything goes back to 1977 when the European Patent Organization was established. So what is this organization? This is an intergovernmental organization with the mission of providing European states a kind of f easy framework for filing patent applications. Now this organization has several entities and one of them is the European Patent Office and the other is the Administrative Council which supervises the office's activities. Now this is let's say the official entity. Uh, the leg legal frame framework for this organization is called the European Patent Convention. And this um, is a legal document which contains rules and articles which, you know, form the framework for inventors and examiners to grant or reject patent applications. And um, so what is a patent? Uh, basically, it's a form of uh, intellectual property. And here's the point. So if you're, you know, an inventor and you have a brilliant new idea, you have two choices. What is the first? Well, keep it secret. And then you can, you know, do whatever you want with your idea. But there's the risk that others will, you know, find out what you're doing and do the same thing. And you will have no legal protection that it's yours or file a patent. And if your patent is granted, this means that you have legal protection. This is your intellectual property for a limited period of time in all member states of the European Patent Organization. And currently we have 38 member states. Now, something important to keep in mind is that this organization has nothing to do with the European Union. This is a completely independent organization. And for instance, there are member states which are not members of the EU like Turkey or Switzerland. So this is basically a patent. And in other terms, if of course, if you have, you know, this brilliant new idea, it has to be a solution to a technical problem. This is a key point. So you cannot patent like mathematical formulas or cognitive, I don't know, ideas. It has to be a technical problem that you solve. Um, so that's it basically. So what you're saying is that if you want to innovate, if you have an idea, then you should protect this with a patent so that you have the law behind you and be able to you know, take advantage of uh, whatever this idea can, uh, can give you. But um, what would be more specifically the criteria that such an application would have to, uh, would have to file so that, um, you know, some patents would be granted to you uh, as really an innovative element? A great question. Uh, so I already mentioned this issue of solving a technical problem. This is, let's say, the starting point. But there are others. And the European Patent Convention sets up the legal framework for this. And one of the most important is, of course, your idea has to be novel. You know, we cannot reinvent what already exists in the state of the art. Now, is novelty sufficient? Well, not really. Because, you know, then you can just combine things that already exist and patent them. It has to be inventive. In the US, they call this not obvious. So what does it mean? Um, so, you know, at the time of filing the application, which might be like today, you need to ask this question. Um, is the person skilled in the art, which is like a person with general knowledge in this field in which you file the application, let's take like computers, so a computer engineer. So would this person find obvious to solve this specific technical problem that your invention solves with the general knowledge that he has, you know, available publicly, so online already existing 
and granted patents or published patents, publications or any publicly available document. But uh, assessing inventive step is a bit more complex, I would say. And basically you have three steps. First thing to do, I mean, also for an inventor, but also for an examiner, is to find the closest prior art document that is, you know, the closest to your application. Once you do this, you need to identify the difference. So what is the difference between the, your invention and this closest document, the, the state of the art? Once you identify the difference, you need to see what specific technical problem does this you know, difference, which might be a, you know, a new technical feature, solve? And then, once you have this technical problem, you need to ask yourself the question, would the person skilled in the art find it obvious to solve this technical problem the way the invention did it? So this is from an examiner's perspective, having you know, the general knowledge in the field. And if it's the case, then it's inventive. So it's kind of the result of a creative activity. It's not like, OK, I just combine two things and there is no creativity, but something new because it has never been combined before. So you need to have this inventive step. And then we have, of course, this other criteria, which is that your invention has to be clear. Because if you know your competitors will say, well, this patent shouldn't have been granted to this person because, OK, we have this document which probably was missed during examination. The judge, which has no technical knowledge in the field, it's a judge, have to, has to clearly identify the perimeter of your invention. So you cannot use in your claims, which is you know, part of the patent application, which has, is the legal protection, you cannot use terms like, OK, I want to patent a car which is approximately red. It's either red or blue, because it has to be clear. Okay. So what, what you're saying is basically that if you want to innovate and protect such an innovation, then you need to really go break through something that doesn't exist and something that has a perceivable utility to, uh, to the people that are granting you this. Uh, yes, this so a technical problem. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for giving us this information, which is very interesting. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again with more details about patents. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us with this episode of the Global Perspectives show. Um, we will continue on the topic uh, with our guest next time. And until then, goodbye and all the best.